Is your event in an area that doesn't have good internet service? Well, don't worry. Today we're going to show you how to get around that problem by using the Code Reader app. With Code Reader, you'll be able to upload a list of your attendees from SimpleTix and be able to scan them in without using the internet. Let's take a look. So the first thing you want to do is go into your SimpleTix dashboard and head on over to attendee list and then select uh, whatever date and time you're going to be looking at and then just export that list. So the attendee list has lots of great information as you can see here um, but for code reader they only need two columns and they need to be in a certain order so the first one has to be the barcode type and the second one has to be the payer's name. Um, so I'll go ahead and take care of that real quickly. And ta-da, we're all set. Um, so as you can see, I've removed all the unnecessary columns away. I put the columns in the right order. And I've also removed the uh, title row there with the um, barcode and the payer's name. So it's just the actual information that's in there. Now this is the most straightforward way to do it. Um, sometimes because there's only two columns to work with, you may need to merge columns. Um, so if you had uh, an offer name like General Mission, you might need to merge that into the payer's name. Um, or some of our organizers have it set up so that they need a different name for every single ticket purchased. Um, so in that case, you'd have to merge um, things there as well. Let me just show you how that works real quickly here. So I've gone ahead and uh, put some information there. So I'll unhide these columns. And we'll remove that. So basically this would be the first name and the last name and you're trying to merge them into one. Um, so we're there. So let's uh, put in a basic formula that we've got. So I'll put this one and we'll put an ampersand, some quotes, a space, quote, another ampersand, and then this and we'll hit return. And you can autofill check here. You can also do it um, if you have a lot of them, which you probably do, you can just drag it down and you can see now it fills in um, with the formula so it's already merged and then again because you only have two columns as an option there, let's go ahead and just hide this and now you've got it all set up to where you want it. So let's go ahead and upload this to Code Reader. So I've logged into my Code Reader site and just as a side note you can check their website for plans and pricing that, that best suit your needs. Um, but what we're going to be doing is adding a database. Um, now you will see probably some sample databases that the code reader people have created, but you can just delete those away. So let's go ahead and click Add a Database. And so here we're going to title it. You can usually title it um, like May 17th at 8 p.m., whatever the date is that you're actually using. For now, for this, I'm just going to do simple ticks test here and I'll create database and now I'm going to import in my uh, list of uh, patrons and barcodes that I had there so one important thing to note is it does need to be a CSV file so if you need to make that conversion beforehand just be sure to do that and I'll uncheck those and I'll just choose my file and now I'll import database here and if I go over to add, I'll now see the two purchases that I have for this date and time. So I have my barcode and my names of each patron. So we've got our database with our list of patrons. And now what we're going to do is add a service. So this will give us uh, the various fields and basically telling it what you want to do uh, with everything here. So um, again, same scenario. You'll probably find there's a, a demo services there and you can just delete those. So let's go ahead and click Add a Service. And the one we're going to choose is Validate Scans with the Database. And so when you're filling this area out, you want to make sure you actually have internet for this portion. And then, of course, once everything is all set up, you can go and have it on your phone and you can be um, in the area where there's no internet. So we're going to choose On Device and be able to sync online later. We made a database, as we saw, so we'll put that one in here. And then as far as the status of duplicate scans, our default is obviously for invalid. So if somebody uh, tries to sneak in a couple of the same ticket, um, that would stop that from happening. So we'll click Create Service. And you can title it whatever you want. Usually it'd be the same um, date and time, but 
I'll just put simple ticks here again. And so we've got our database and that looks all good to me there. And so we'll click save and continue. And you can add multiple users if you want to. Um, right now I just have me, but you can add as many as you want. And the next areas here, they're not actually gonna be important. So we're not gonna have questions, we're not gonna have advanced that won't pertain to what we're doing today with things. So we'll just breeze through that. And then we'll click done. So now we've completed the two steps uh, for the code reader portion. Let's head on over to the app and see how it works. So here we are on the code reader app. Um, I've gone ahead and put in my email and my password and I'll click sign in. And you will need to download the database. So this is the last time you'll need to have the internet um, for things. So we've got our database with our two items. And now we're all set to scan. So we're at the event, there's no internet, and we're ready to, to scan tickets in with things. So I'll pull up a ticket here. And so that's our valid one, that's for Mike. And let's just say hypothetically someone decides to be shady and try to sneak one pass with uh, the same barcode twice. Hang it again, and you'll get the invalid there with the response so it won't go through. Um, so that's the basic ticket scanning process. So while you're doing those scanning in uh, process with things, um, that's when your device is offline. So hypothetically, if you went back to Code Reader and went into your services and tried to view the scans, you wouldn't see anything here because you haven't uploaded it yet. So, because everything is, is still offline at this point. So let's go ahead and figure out how we actually upload our scans. So once the event is over and you've returned safely to the internet, you can see you've got some scans to upload here. So if you just click on that, click upload, and then they'll be up downloading again so you can update the database. And now you've uploaded your scans onto your Code Reader website. So back in Code Reader, we can now see if we go over to our services and click on scans, we've now got the two scans that we did. So you have both the valid one uh, down here with the information and the invalid one that went through as well. Um, and there's reports and other things that you can look at here with things, but that is how you use the Code Reader to scan um, tickets when there is no internet. We'll see you next time.